Welcome back. In between the parts, what I decided to do was go around and see if I could find all the people with their lost items and stuff like that, mess around, see if I could get that sorted. Like, like here, it's like, as you can see now, I have no lost items. I'm still wondering on this tactics primer though. Didn't I get that from a quest? Why do I still have it? Is there anything I could do with it? But also, in the previous part, we did get these investigation notes. Now, before we go off and sort that out, of the finish exploring, I assume, we shall actually go to support here and carry on these. So let's do Claude and Petra. Huh. This looks like an ideal place to take a nap. Only one way to know for sure. Ah, and there's a nice breeze today, too. Claude? Huh? Why are you taking a sleep on the ground, Claude? Is that Petra? Where are you? Were you up in that tree the whole time? I couldn't feel your presence at all. Amazing. It is safe to take sleep in the tree's top. Why would you choose the dangerous ground instead? Your logic is sound, I'll give you that. But how is one supposed to get up there without losing the sleepies from the effort? I do not know what is meant by the sleepies, but getting in the tree's top is easy. And you will be using all of your energy, so that good sleep will find you up in the tree. I see. That makes a certain kind of sense, but it's not as relaxing as a good ground sleep. Give it some trying. And do not think with too much hardness when you return to the ground. Feel it. If you stop for thinking, your arms will get heavy. That is way more thought than I'd hoped to give this nap of mine. But I'm not one to give up before even trying. Here goes nothing. I... I can do this! I have not known a noble here who can climb trees. Is this a weakness of Fodlan nobles? No, not a weakness. I just... How do I... Yeah! You should be quitting. It is a danger to be falling from such a height. Oh, I, I think that's enough for today. This might sound like an excuse, but we don't have a lot of tall trees where I grew up. This is all new to me. You should take your sleep on the ground. I will take mine in the tree. Uh, you won that round, tree. You lost to a tree. Very well, I clawed again then. So I'm a Marianne. Marianne, please accept my apologies for my behavior yesterday. I'm not sure what you mean. Asking you about your family like that was pretty insensitive of me. No matter how curious I am, that's no way to treat someone. I'm sorry. Oh, no. You weren't being insensitive. I just didn't want to talk about it. I don't spend much time talking about myself. Not to people, anyway. If not people, then with who? Unpeople? <gasps> Non-people? Well, yes. I'm much more comfortable talking to anyone who isn't a person. I was actually joking, but now I'm mystified. Who is it you like to talk to? Dorte the horse. Ah, of course. Good old Dorte. And does he understand what you tell him? We understand each other. He tells me when he's sleepy, or when his stomach hurts, or if his nose itches. Sounds like a complainer, that Dorte. But let's table this fascinating discussion for just a moment. Now that we've gotten in some small talk, I'd like to know what you're hiding. You are hiding something, right? Your lineage, perhaps? Uh, no. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If it's all just idle gossip, that's fine too. But if it's something silly like, my ancestors were cursed, therefore I'm cursed, you should know that I won't accept that nonsense. That sort of thinking is stupid, and that's all there is to it. Say your ancestors were thieves. Does that make you a thief, even if you've never stolen a thing? Of course not. But people have burdens to bear from the moment they're born. My burdens are so big that I... I'm sorry, I can't discuss this anymore. People certainly are born with burdens. She's right about that. But Marianne, don't you know that you can choose not to carry them? I feel like he he's a bit naive in this, to be honest. It's like... like... That's easier said than done, mate. Alright, so... Leone. 
Is the water supposed to be this cold? Ah, my head slipped again. Hey, what's that noise? What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry, okay? Another fine mess I've gotten myself into. What happened, Claude? You're soaked. The student whose turn it was to do the dishes today was ill, so I volunteered to take his place. The dining hall lady was on my case the whole time for breaking plates and getting water everywhere. Actually, not everywhere, mostly on myself. It was just one big mess. It wore me right out, too. I could really use a nap about now. <laughs> you might be a noble with a fancy bloodline, but you sure don't act the part. Being noble or common doesn't have anything to do with washing dishes. Oh? I dare say most nobles would refuse to do it. But hey, I prefer it your way. You don't act like you're better than everyone. <laughs> I'm honored that you acknowledge my greatness. And I'm rather fond of your blunt way of praising a person's strengths, too. Really? To be honest, I don't actually trust my own ability to read people. I like to look for the good in them, but that doesn't always mean it's really there. I mean, you seem like a good person, but your heart could be black for all I know. You say you can't figure people out, but what you said just now was pretty shrewd. It's wise not to trust appearances alone. I'll keep that in mind. Though, I'm not sure I should be taking advice from someone covered in dish suds. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see your point. Did you get them up your nose? What caused you to sneeze? I don't know, I don't know. We've got a lot going on here, haven't we? It's like, this is gonna take... Probably several parts to get through this lot, like, geez, all right, so Raphael? Mm. Mm. Ah, meat is the best. Veggies and fish are great too, but uh, <laughs> there's nothing like a good cut of meat. May I join you? Hey, Lawrence, you here to eat? It looks like you barely grabbed anything. Please, this amount will suffice for me. There's no need to compare our portions. No wonder you're so skinny. My little sis eats more than you. Come on, have some of mine. You need it more than I do. Uh, you offer me half-eaten scraps? The nerve. With manners like that, even a nobleman would be an absolute disgrace. Have you no dignity? You're pretty touchy, huh? It's probably just because you're hungry. Raphael, please, do you mind? I cannot enjoy the simple pleasure of a meal in these conditions. Why can't you enjoy your meal? You don't like what's on the menu? You wait here. I'll go to the kitchen and find something tastier for you. That won't be necessary. Please, just let me eat. In peace. Alone. I don't think you get it, Lawrence. Nothing goes with a meal better than good company. If leading the Alliance is your goal, you should really try eating with other people first. I'm afraid I fail to see the connection between leadership and dining. If you want to be a leader, you have to know how to get along with different types of people, right? If you really want to get to know someone, all you have to do is share a meal with them. Quite the contrary, unfortunately. It seems the more time I spend eating with you, the less likely we are to become friends. The, the more you eat with someone, the more you learn about them. Their likes, their dislikes, you know? You might get some of their food that way, too. You can eat more and bulk up. <laughs> All that talking made me hungry again. I'm gonna go get seconds. Oh, what an absolute bother. But I suppose he does have a point about observations of character at the dinner table. He is so useless. He just, he just is useless. It's like no way around it, it's, it's the same character. Ish. Ignatz, let us take a short break. I will pour tea. Please choose a teapot for us to use. You want me to pick one? I don't see any other Ignatz around here, do you? Go on now, we're wasting time. The pots are over here. I will leave the selection to your judgment. Ah, uh, let's see. How about this? That's rather plain. Why did you choose that one? The tea you chose has a very subtle taste, as well as a smooth, light texture. Such an unassuming tea calls for an unassuming pot, and one that complements the tea's color. 
In addition, the pot I selected has a floral design. Although we can't go for a walk today, we can still bask a little in nature's beauty. Very interesting. You know, you have an absolutely marvelous aesthetic eye. Precisely what I would expect from the son of a merchant house that has enjoyed the Gloucester's patronage for so many years. After we graduate, when you begin your trade in earnest, I will introduce you to my father. Oh, that sounds wonderful. But I'm afraid I'm already on the path to becoming a knight. Ah, right, you are a second son. Still, your eye for beauty is a talent that should not go to waste. Very well. If you are to be a knight, then I shall happily take you into my service. Ah, well... Hmm... What, does that displease you? Not at all. I just need a little time to think it over. His eye for the arts is unwavering, but in all other matters he is woefully indecisive. Like how he refers to it as the arts. You're on about tea. Um, right, so, Lysithia. Lysithia, do you have a moment? There is a matter of significance I'd like to discuss with you. I know you're always seeking the attention of ladies, but why are you wasting your breath on me? Don't be silly. I want to discuss the future of the Alliance, to have a constructive and candid exchange of opinion. I'm not so sure I'm the one being silly. Actually, I'm busy. Stuff to do. Now hold on just a moment. House Ordelia will never benefit from such a narrow-minded mentality. I was under the impression you were interested in me as a person. What do house matters have to do with anything? As it stands, the bonds between Alliance Lords are quite weak. If this state of affairs persists, I'm afraid those bonds may dissolve entirely. I couldn't care less. House Ordelia may be small, but a small house is fettered by fewer obligations than a larger one. Apply yourselves actively in diplomacy, negotiate wisely, and you could do much to help maintain peace among the neighboring lords. The recognition of those lords would benefit your house immensely. To that end, why not start with me, the heir to House Gloucester? It couldn't hurt for us to become friends, could it? Yes, yes, of course, when the time comes. But right now, I'm quite busy. Maybe later. As it is, I'm studying magic for the benefit of the Alliance, and I would appreciate it if you left me to it. Ah, I see. Then forgive the intrusion. I will take my leave of you for now. But if there is any way I can be of help to you or your house, I hope that you won't hesitate to ask. After all, as I'm sure you know, the future of the Alliance is my responsibility. <laughs> the future, he says. <laughs> As though I have a future. Hey, what? Hey, what did we? What did that mean? What did that mean? Oh. Hello, Marianne. You're well, I hope. I am, Lawrence. Thank you. I cannot help but notice you do not look it. Is that so? I feel fine. Hmm. Well, was there something you needed? Uh, how unseemly of me. My apologies. It is not my intention to stare. Does something about me seem... off? Oh, not at all. I was just remembering your father. Or rather, comparing my experience of him to you. Your father, Margrave Edmund. He is one of the shrewdest nobles in all the Alliance, with a noted gift for pointed speech. On and beyond the battlefield, his words have the power to move friend and foe alike. My own father has said he would not want to make an enemy of him. Naturally, I am of the same mind. Your father is blessed with gifts of confidence and eloquence. Yet compared to him, you seem always reticent and downcast. Uh Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to cause you discomfort. It's just that the contrast between you and your father is striking. I have very little in common with my adoptive father. But he sent you to Garrick Mark. Clearly, he sees potential in you. I think I see it too. Yes, a certain charm. Gravitas, if you will. Just like him. Oh. I 
I can't say that I know too much about him. I should be going now. Y yes, y yes, of course. Please, take care. Oh, such grace, such serenity. How could such a beauty be hiding in plain sight? With a little polish, she would shine magnificently. Hmm. There was a lot of triple dotting in that, wasn't there? But she did go all shiny at one point. Kind of strange. Ah, Lawrence. At it again. Hello, Hilda. Are you training too? If that's the case, I may have to revise my opinion of you. Increased strength and skill would serve as perfect complements to your beauty and esteemed lineage. Um, no, I just left something here. I don't share your tireless work ethic. You're quite something. I don't think I've ever seen you take a break. When the fate of all the Alliance rests on your shoulders, the rigors of training seem paltry by comparison. Besides, when my admirers see that even an individual of my talent possesses a diligent work ethic, it is sure to inspire them. I see. But I was wondering... <laughs> Never mind. You're clearly busy. Oh, is there something you require? What do you need? There is nothing I cannot handle. Well, the trouble is, I'm no good at fighting. I'm a fragile young lady, not a fearsome warrior. I didn't even want to join the Academy, honestly. My brother made me. Of course. For a delicate flower such as yourself, no doubt battle must present a terrible hardship. <laughs> it does. It truly does. So, I was wondering if, in the next training session, you'd do my fighting for me? I mean, I can put on a tough, I'm actually fighting kind of air, but that's not quite enough on its own. Please, leave all of the difficulty to me. I shall permit no harm to befall you. Ah, I'm so happy. In that case, I'll focus on giving a convincingly soldierly performance. You know, Lawrence, you're a good guy. Not that I'd have expected anything less from a noble. With each of your foes that I vanquish, I shall only become ever stronger. Yes, leave it all to me. <laughs> what a guy. And all I had to do was ask. Hmm, maybe I'll have a snack. Oh, she is quite devious, isn't she? Quite devious indeed. You can see it, that smirk on her face and everything. Hey Lawrence, got a minute? Certainly. I trust you're well? Doing great. I found a load of old weapons, just got done hauling them out of storage. Old weapons, you say? If there are any interesting swords in there, I would love to see them. They might only be good for training, but with a little care, who knows? Here, have some oil. And... Uh... Why exactly are you giving this to me? Like I said, they need a little care. With a bit of maintenance, some of these will really shine. Yes, I heard you. So why did you give me the oil? It's for polishing, Lawrence. Don't tell me you've never polished a weapon before. But that is hardly a task befitting someone of my station. If you had an exquisite blade, something of real historical significance to complement my noble heritage, that would be another matter. In that case, appraise while you polish, you're bound to find something good working through these. This seems as fine an occasion as any to air my grievances. I am a highborn noble. As such, it is my sworn duty to protect the common folk. I have no time for trivialities. What's more, you seem to be under the misapprehension that you can order me about. Please think carefully about how you speak to me. I'm not ordering you around, and I'm not talking to you as a noble either. I'm asking you to help me with this, as a friend. I am your friend, but I am also a noble. Those two qualities are not mutually exclusive. Oh good. Let's get to it then, buddy. Again, all I, all I hear, when they got about nobles and stuff, it's like, it's useless. It's just useless. Yes, we got so many to go through. So many. You got like think like oh every single one is gonna have an interaction. But as we get down to Leone, like she'll be done when we get to her because we'll have the interactions with everyone else, won't we? So let's make our way through. They'll get quicker over time. 
Yes! Time for food! Hey, Ignatz! Is this seat taken? Oh, hey, Raphael. I'm done eating, so you can sit here if you like. Really? But there's still food on your plate. Uh, it's fine. I'm not that hungry. Anyway, I guess I'll be heading off. Oh. Okay. Hey, Ignatz! Want to train with me? Uh, oh my! That equipment's looking rusty. Let me fetch some oil. What's the matter? It always looks like that. Come on. We'll take care of it later. No, you have to do it as soon as you notice. There's oil in the warehouse. I'll be right back. Hey, Ignatz! Uh, hello, Raphael. Are you busy? I need to talk to you. No, uh, that's... Oh, almost forgot. It's time to return this book to the library. I'll just... Hey, hey, hey. Hold up. Are you seriously going to keep running away from me? What? No, I'm not running. Yes, you are. Every time I try to talk to you, you make up some excuse and run. What's going on? You were a lot friendlier to me when we were kids. You were always so excited to show me all the neat stuff you had whenever I came to visit. We'd play hide-and-seek with my little sis, draw pictures, and do other fun stuff, too. Remember all that? Things... can't be the way they were. It's regrettable, but it's the truth. Regrettable? What's there to regret? I mean... you know... what happened to your parents. My parents are the reason your parents died. What are you talking about? My parents died in an accident while traveling for work. Maybe so, but they were taking over for mine, because they had other business that day and couldn't go themselves. So, they recommended yours to fill in for them. Huh. I didn't know that. But what does that have to do with our friendship? No, but see, I... Oh, I see. But we're done talking about this. You gotta stop beating yourself up over it. It was an accident. He's just putting on a brave face. No one is that forgiving. It's not really about forgiving when you get down to it. It's just it's beyond your control, really. It's just, it's not your fault. Ah, uh, this theory just isn't coming together. The thought behind it is sound enough, but... Hmm. Hey, Lysithia. Your forehead's all wrinkled. You look tense. Is something wrong? You know you can tell your big bro rat. I mean, <laughs> you know you can tell me anything, right? Raphael, while I appreciate your offer, I'm not so sure you'll be much help here. What does that mean? Oh, are you researching something complicated? In that case, yeah, you're probably right. Is there something else I can help you with? I'm really good at other things, like training. <laughs> I have absolutely zero interest in such things. I have an idea. Do you want to get real good at playing tag? I can teach you. There's a trick to it that most people don't know. Like to not get tagged and stuff. Let me show you. It's too sunny to spend all day inside studying. Come on, big bro's gonna take you outside. Uh, shut up, shut up, shut up! Can't you see I'm busy? Go bother someone else. What nerve you have, too, calling yourself Big Bro, like I'm your little sister or some nonsense. Just cut the act. Uh, did I really say that out loud? Anyway, my grades are miles better than yours. If you want to play the part of Big Brother, you'd probably benefit from studying way, way more. Like I said, I'm really good at other things. Just not classroom learning. I can't stand all the excuses. Clearly, you're the little kid here. You got all that? Now don't bother me again. Understood? Bye. <sighs> she must be going through a rebellious phase. That's one way to put it. Jeez. Alright, then some more Raphael nonsense for us. Hey, Marianne, what's she in? Mind if I join you? I'm starving. Uh-huh. Oh, um... All my favorite dishes are on the menu today. I might have grabbed too much. You want some? No, thanks. I... 
All you've got on your plate are leaves. Are you sure that'll fill you up? Uh, I'm done eating now. I have to go. Huh? You're already done eating? But there's still food on your plate. Hey, Marianne! Huh. Maybe she's not feeling well. I should probably go check on her later. Oh, is that so? I'm so happy you found all of that food. A little gray starling told me that you can find berries if you fly out toward the mountains. Oh, I found Marianne. I didn't know she spent her time here. It sounds like she's talking to someone. What's that? You want to try some nectar from the flowers in the greenhouse? That might be tricky. I guess you could try it if I'm already there. Otherwise, you might get locked in. Hey, Marianne! Who are you talking to? Ah! Huh? Oh, the birdie flew off. It, yes, it looks like he has. What are you doing here, Raphael? You were acting a little strange when we were eating earlier, so I wanted to check on you. I was worried. Uh, that's sweet of you, but I'm fine. Are you sure? Well, that's good to hear. As long as... Wait a minute! Were you just talking to a bird? Excuse me? <laughs> I knew it! You can talk to birds! I'm right, aren't I? Uh, um... Yes. That's incredible! This place is full of interesting folks. But I didn't think anyone spoke birdie. No, that's not it. This bird just happened to be... speaking human. Amazing! I hope I get to meet a bird who speaks human one day. I like how open he is to that idea. Like, oh, that'd be cool. That'd be great. I could speak to the birds. It's like, oh, that's just cool, right? Hilda. Right. Then this goes here. Hello, Raphael. What exactly are you doing with that piece of wood? Hey, Hilda. I'm just doing this. With your bare hands. Impressive that just the outer ring is left. It makes quite a nice circle. Yeah, I just gotta polish it up and paint it. Then the base of the necklace will be ready. Sorry, did you say necklace? How's it look? I bet it's the right size too. And this tree bark smells amazing. Now I just need to carve these boar tusks to hang from it. Boar tusks? I almost forgot. I was gonna add these wolf claws too. And I could even add some color to them. And wolf claws? Huh? Is something wrong, Hilda? That necklace. It has a certain, uh, rustic charm? You're right. It really does. Want me to make you one while I'm at it? Oh, no. I wouldn't want to trouble you. Besides, I think it would look better on you than on me. <laughs> it would definitely look good on me. But this one's actually a birthday present for my little sis. For your sister? I, I mean, uh, uh... Don't you think she might like something more feminine? Something cute? Something cute? What's wrong with something tough and rugged? This necklace is gonna have tusks and claws and stuff. But girls don't usually go for tusks and claws and stuff. There should be flowers or gems or... Here, I, I can talk you through it. If you're making a necklace for your sister, you might try putting a pretty little flower in a small crystal bottle and sealing it with resin. If you say so. But where would I find a flower that was pretty enough? Oh, honestly, I don't know much about flowers. But, hmm, now that I think about it, I remember hearing about a splendid flower that only blooms near Fodlin's throat. Fodlin's throat? That's on the eastern edge of the Alliance. I'd have to leave now if I'm going to make it back in time. <laughs> yeah, that does seem like a bit of a stretch. Okay, let me think. Um, where'd he go? Well, no matter. Three months later. Oh dear, oh dear, he's... He's very devoted to his sister. Right, anyway, Leone. Hey, Leone. Are you just getting back? Whoa, what's with the bag? It's huge! Oh, this? 
I thought I'd get all my chores done at once. Guess it got a little out of hand. Sorry to be a pain, but could you help me out? I'm happy to help. Where'd you go to get all this stuff? Well, first it was just the cloth scraps from the tailor, and then it was the used oil from a restaurant in town. After that, it was the books the scholars didn't know what to do with. I mean, that was just on the way. Whoa, it sounds like you did a lot of running around today. It wasn't so bad. I just figured it would save time if I did it all in one trip. You planned all that out? Impressive! What are you going to do with all that stuff you got? The scraps will be good for dishcloths, and I can make soap from the oil. The books are just to help with my studies. You really can't let anything go to waste, can you? Nope. Can't stand the idea. Who knew you were so thoughtful? I mean, with actual thinking ahead. You're so generous to everyone and always making me food. I never knew how much thought you must put into it. I cook to relax, and it's nice seeing how enthusiastic you get about eating what I make. Whatever I give away is just the stuff that isn't useful to me. I pick up all sorts of things when I'm in town. Giving things like that to people who need them or who can actually use them makes sure they aren't wasted. That makes sense. You've got to use up the stuff you've got, after all. Hey, do you think you're like this because you didn't have much growing up? <laughs> I guess times were tough now that you mention it. The folks in my village definitely aren't rich. My dad had to go through a lot of trouble to get the recommendations I needed to attend the academy. That doesn't mean I've grown up to be stingy. It just means I don't like to squander. Anyway, enough of that. It's in poor taste to go on about your own hardships. I've always got time for a meal with a friend, and it so happens I picked up some choice meat today. Why don't we share it? Now you're speaking my language! I could do with some meat. A big, chunky steak. Quite lovely. But we are actually going to end this part here, because it's been half an hour. Like, oh dear. Oh dear, we're going to have another part after this where it's... Pretty much the same thing, just these little support scenes. That's the price of all this leveling up. That's the price of the leveling up. So we'll see you in the next part, when we do some more support scenes. Ta-ta! For now.